to be live and kill me high or what? Yep, I don't know. You better really go with them on the phone? Yeah. Okay. And then it said REC on the camera? Yes. Let's do it. You want to do the introductions? No. Why do you? Okay. Welcome. To true Hebrews United of the Lord Yeshua. She beloved. Holiness instructor. You're not the holiest instructor. Oh, well, I thought we were just talking about you. What? Oh, you missed it. Beloved. Cut. <laughs> um, Sister Katora. You're trying to sit all up and stuff. I can do that too. You're sure you're going to talk Yeah, right. And then beloved what? Just written. Okay, and it's the true, the true holiness instructor, discipleship, Joe Sarver. <laughs> I'm about to get into the book a little bit. So, um, definitely thank the Almighty, I hope you got your short one, we got the problem. Sent down, it's coming down to the likeness of flesh and died of our souls. Once again, the third day, all those that believe in him repent from their sins and be baptized in his wonderful name. Shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadish. That is the power to get you to overcome sin, to overcome the wicked one, to overcome the world. That is your seal of redemption, your VIP pass into the kingdom. Definitely all honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, and the deacons. That's a person alive, getting into scripture, persuading people's hearts back to the Father, and persuading people to repent from their sins. It's a tough job. So also... Paul on to the brothers and sisters, uh, Munya B, uh, Craig down in San Diego. The, um, who else? What shout outs you got? Sister Hava, Brother Dali, Brother Tay, They're Princess here. Gabby. Oh, sorry, we're only doing stakes. No, we're doing the, we do the ones in Belize. Who, uh, what about people you know at stakes out? Co-Cab and um, Amira. Yeah, cool. That's it, thank them. Um, what else? What do you think? And then all the people trying to come to this gospel shop and repent. And um, if you see it, it's in the book and it's right here to buy it, then obey it. Whether you have a congregation or not, you do need a congregation. You gotta find a place to plant yourself. We pray in the Almighty find you a person to plant yourself. This is a good um, topic. We'll be dealing a couple of topics we'll be dealing on two, even five. Pray where you should plant yourself. So um a couple of topics I want to deal with. Uh, we had a, a compost video, a couple of compost videos about uh, every uh, body believer should learn how to make their own soil because where you're at, depending on where you're at, whether you're in hot Texas where barely anything grows or you're in the tropical rainforest like we are, uh, it's good to have your own soil, know how to grow your own fruits. You can even look on the Facebook and the YouTube the difference between normal dirt and good soil and fertilizer. It's like three times faster, produce more fruit. You'll see the difference. We should always be working on be self-sufficient and going from there. How do you feel about that? I agree. Um, I think that's just one level of self-sufficiency, but I think it's a very primary foundation level of self-sufficiency because um, being able to grow your own food and having access to your own food is going to be crucial. Okay. You got to speak up. You got to speak up. Agreeing on what they said um, too about the food, because because we don't <coughs> want to we don't want to eat as far as the food that they're um, processing anymore as far as you guys know. So better off to already start now uh, a lot of food um, plants. Yep. Yep. That and also um, in America I feel like we've gotten so far away from being connected to the earth like people if their food doesn't come from a grocery store they don't want it. If it's not prepackaged they don't want it and so you know, back in the days when our ancestors and stuff came off the plantations, they knew how to grow their own food, they knew how to be self-sufficient, you know, and a lot of people now were not self-sufficient. We don't know, you know, the difference between an apple tree and an orange tree when it's not bearing, and that's one of the things that I noticed when uh, we first moved here to Belize, is that people very just commonly 
understand and know what things look like. It could be it can be a um, a vegetable that grows in the ground, and just by looking at the leaves, some of my Belizean friends were like, "Oh, that's a turnip," or "Oh, that's a this," or "Oh, that's a that." You know, or they'll be like, "I had um, bought a mango tree. I had it planted. It wasn't fruiting." And my friend walked by. And she was just walking by the house, and she goes, "Oh, you bought yourself a mango tree." And she just looked at this is a you know a very young tree, and just by looking at the leaves, she knew exactly what it was. And when you think about how far removed, I didn't know any of these things. I still don't know a lot of these things. You know, I'm learning slowly, but um, just seeing how far we've gotten away from being connected to Earth and producing our own things. I agree. Um, also. Uh, I want to deal with the topic of, uh, like she was saying, homestead or being self-sufficient. Um, any body of believers should be self-sufficient, even if it's just you and your family. You should always have uh, something set apart if an emergency happened. I'll say that. Um, because all throughout the Bible, we see that they prepared, whether it be where Jacob, where the famine, and Jacob went into Israel and whatnot, or Joseph went into Israel, and um, and they had the dream. The king had the dream, and seven years of plenteous and seven years of famine, and they saved up, and because of that, they got through the famine. Or you see where Hezekiah, uh, he did the feast days, and then people brought extra, and they stored it up. So then, when they were in the siege, he actually had. Uh, food and water and substance for the people in Jerusalem. So we see that uh, even if a farmer saves for the winter, uh, being prepared should be your daily life. Uh, seeing biblically, if uh, all these Christians talk about the mark of the beast, I mean, and it's in the Bible, but how these Christians talk about it, but what they do about it is zero to none. Um, the majority of people I talk to don't have anything basic. First aid kit, don't have any, not even rechargeable batteries, just no self sufficiency whatsoever. So, I mean, you got to get on that, even if it's just a rocket stove to where you could just cook off a of wood. You know, you're not going to be able to have propane or all this stuff, and you don't want to cause a huge bonfire just to cook a little bit of food. And, you know, it's just uh, making yourself a target. So, um, any believer should be about homestead, be about being self sufficient. Regardless of the reason, regardless of where you live, you should be independent. If everything, all the lights turn off, no internet, no nothing. And you can put your hands to the plow and you'll be able to make it. Not only for yourself and your family, but for other brothers and sisters in the body that may not have it or, you know, they just came, they just got baptized, they just came to the Almighty. They didn't even know. They're just going to learn how to repent from their sins. They're still babes in the Almighty and pooping in their pads and struggling with certain things. They might just, you know, you might have to help them and guide them. Our other brothers coming together, you know, you want to be able to come together with brothers and be a benefit to the whole body itself and not just be um, un an unintentional leech to where you come and join forces, but you have nothing to bring to the table. No nothing. skill sets. No nothing. So um, how do you feel about that? No, I agree. Um, I feel like a lot of people's mentality is that I'll just come, but when you're joining a group that is mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially prepared to be self-sufficient, and you think that just by being there that you are a benefit to them, you're really not. If anything, you're you're an, uh, a liability. You're not an asset. It's like, what skills are you? Do you know how to do carpentry? Are you a mechanic? Or are you a nurse? Like. Most people aren't coming with these skill sets, and that's fine, you know, we don't have the skill sets, but you need to come, if you come self-sufficient already to a self-sufficient group, then it's not like, you know, they already have five oranges for themselves, and you come with no oranges, well now we got to take care of you too, so now we got to get six or seven oranges, so now you're not, you're not helping them. So it's like, if you're not going to help yourself, don't attach yourself to somebody else, because then you're not, you are draining them, you know, be, be by yourself. Go to hell by yourself, you know, struggle by yourself, but don't pull other people down with you. Yeah, because the first thing they'll do too is they'll you don't tell people, you know, like they say preppers, don't tell other don't tell people what you got or what you're doing. Because the first thing, oh I'm coming to you. I even see where people I tell people about being self sufficient and they'll say, I'm gonna come to where you're at. 
Like they're going to come all the way to Belize from the states. They're going to come all the way to Belize and like I'm going to tell you where I stay or where I'm at and what I'm doing, what district I'm at. So they even say that. That's the mindset. I've seen another guy who's an old Marine. He says, I'm going to be a marauder. I'm going to take other people's stuff. You know, if they're not with me, I'm against you. Yes, them. And then, you know, you kind of just stay away from people like that. But that's the mentality. Also, too, you hit on with uh, uh, being uh, coming to a group. You'll be surprised how much just three extra mouths it takes just to feed every day. Three mouths, three times a day. You'll be surprised what an extra three people, how much toilet paper an extra three people can do. Is she all right? Go ahead. Oh, she can't get the tablet. It's seven. But you'll be surprised how much extra toilet paper that is. And we're not even doing this to do a prepper group. We're more so doing it because um, saints of the Most High should be preppers, and that's what the that's what society or the secular term used for that. But we just watch and pray. That's what the Bible says. Watch and pray. Speaking of that, let's go to. Uh, Luke 21, Luke 21, starting at verse 33, Luke 21, verse 33, are you there? All right, it says, um, Luke 21, verse 33, yeah, it says, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, the cares of the world, or drunkenness, or the cares of this life, so that the day come upon you unaware. So don't fall into sin, but what she says. For as a, a snare it shall come unto them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that should come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Because persecution and destruction will come, but he'll get favor. So if you if you say you have faith, it says faith without works is dead being alone. So by default, if you have faith in this scripture that you need to watch and pray that you can escape, then you should be prepared for what's going to come. That if you read on that whole chapter in 21, you read in Revelation, you read in Daniel, and then Isaiah, all throughout the Old Testament pretty much, what's going to come to pass, then you could prepare because I'm putting my faith to works. When he said he'll provide for Jacob, he still had to dig those wells. When he told Israel, Moses, to go take the land, and Joshua ended up going over, they still had to fight battles, and they still had casualties. There was one, there was two times in the whole, battle, in the whole Bible where they didn't lose not one person, but... Even though he promised them the land, they still had to fight for it. There was works with their faith. They believed the Most High would protect them and let them win the battle, but men still died. And that's the mindset you need to have. If you're watching and praying that these days, you can escape these days. You don't just spend your money blindly. You don't just, oh, well, the Almighty Son. There's no manna coming down. Those days are over. You know, there's no quail like how with Elijah coming to drop down some bread and some meat in the morning and some bread and some meat in the evening. Those days are, are going to happen because he's giving you an opportunity to prepare. Watch and pray that you can escape these days. That's, uh, go ahead. that's what I feel most people rely on. They're like, y'all will provide, y'all will provide. That's what I hear the most. And it's like, my my father, my natural father, who's no longer here, but, you know, let's just say. So my natural father is going to take care of me. But if my natural father says, hey, I need you to do X, Y, and Z, for a time to come in the future, and I don't do it, I can't be upset when I when there aren't provisions made for me. So it's like, yeah, y'all will provide, but he's also told you, hey, you need to look out and you need to take care of these things. Like when the plagues came to Egypt, and he said, you know, strike your doorpost with the blood of the lamb. This was the preparation. He that's essentially store up or you know whatever the case may be. Prepare for a time to come in the future, and they and they were told like, hey, you don't have to do it, but just know that if you don't do it, then you will suffer the same fate as the Egyptians. Right. So when the father tells you to prepare and you don't prepare, 
you can't be mad when the plague comes and then your firstborn dies, all your firstborn cattle, firstborn of your children, whatever, when they die, because the father already gave you pre, uh, he gave you a warning, and that's that's his way of taking care of you. I'm giving you a warning. Yep. So if you don't listen to the warning, that's then so I, I mean, he blew the trumpet, just like Ezekiel. He says, "Hey, son of man, I'm gonna set you a parchment." You blow the trumpet. If they don't give heed to the trumpet, hey, they're going to die in their own iniquity, and you saved your own life alone because you sounded the trumpet, and they didn't take heed. So when we read Daniel, when we read the book of Revelation, these are the trumpets. He's going to sound some actual trumpets, but this is the warning. This is him giving you warning to watch and pray for these signs and make preparation for these days. So we'll go with uh, Revelation 18. Uh, one reason I want to do with Revelation 18 is because there's a, a big... Thing going on on Facebook and YouTube saying that all of Canada, North America, Mexico, Guatemala, Panama, Belize, all of Central America, all of South America is considered Babylon. I don't know where you guys get this Cause, foolishness. Because it's called America. There's, cause, there's only one nation that was Babylon. If, if we're relating the Old, Old Testament Babylon to the New Testament Babylon, the Old Testament Babylon, his dominion was over 121 provinces or whatnot, but there was only one location that was called Babylon. He had dominion over Israel and dominion over these other places and dominion over Egypt, but Egypt was not called Babylon. Egypt was still Egypt, even though he ruled over Egypt and ruled over Israel. Israel was not called Babylon when he ruled over Israel too and had Israel and, and uh, Judea into captivity, but that was not called Babylon. So back to... Now, Babylon, you can't say anything that's called America is referred to Babylon. So we're going to go. Just to add to that point, uh, you'll see that from a lot of people who haven't traveled worldly. Because when I fill out forms for my passport, when I fill out declaration forms going into foreign countries, I put American. That is my nationality, American. If you're from Guatemala, even though they're in Central America, they're technically Guatemala. There's no such thing as when you look at the continents. There's no such thing as Central America. It's North America, South America. So Guatemala is in North America. So they don't put American. They don't put North American. They put Guatemalan. So you can't say that you know everything that's called Americas are a part of America because they're not. America is known as America, and then everything else has their own country's yeah. names, just like he was saying. And then on top of that is, so for you to say that North America, South America, Central America, all that is Babylon, then that means you also have to confirm that all of those nations fit what we're about to read in Revelation. So every single one, Belize, Brazil, all this stuff, all Chile. that stuff, you Chile, you have to say that all these nations, all these countries fit Revelation 18. So let's go to Revelation 18. And I'm just going to scratch the surface. If you want to know what it, what Babylon is, I think I did like a three, four part on it. It's on the YouTube. Um, and um, just definitely go over that. And I will go over just the history of who fulfills what prophecy pinpoint? Uh, you're definitely like that, and why you need to take heed to it. So, put your faith to works. Revelation 18. We're going to start at verse 1. Let's get it. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power in the earth, a lightning with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, it is fallen to become a habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul uh, spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So we know they're still clean and unclean animals. That's why you still need to keep the diet prescribed in the Bible. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So who's waxing rich through Chile? Through how much stuff you buy that, that that's from Guatemala? How, how, how are you waxing rich? Do the, the merchants waxing rich? How much stuff Guatemala is buying or Chile is buying? How much stuff is Brazil buying? Because if you look at it with the exception of these last couple of years with Russia, uh, United States was the leading import nation in the world. I think it was $2.7 trillion worth of imports every year. They imported more stuff into the country than any other country on this planet. 
So how if the United States is fit in this? It says that the merchants of the earth were waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So you think little old Chile is importing that much goods to where all these nations are getting rich compared to two point seven trillion dollars? So who fits that? Who fits that? What country fits? Are you going to say North America and South America is all Babylon? So let's keep going because we need to deal with what nation actually fits this. Let's get it. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you not a partaker of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven and the God have re uh, remembered her iniquities. Okay? So Chile, Brazil, all this stuff, they must be doing super damage, right? Let's keep going. Remember, uh, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. So who's he talking to? Who did he reward? The people of the Most High? What, the traffic of slave trade? Talking about the Hebrew Israelites? Let's keep going. In the cup that she had filled, filled to her double, how much so shall she glorify herself and live deliciously? Guatemala is not a rich country, so how she, Mexico is not a super rich country. How are they living deliciously? Delicacy. Deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she hath said in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and shall see no sorrow. So all the North America and South America is, is that prideful and that haughty when there's some poor countries in South America? Are you really saying that? Let's keep going. They're the, the, some of the poorest countries in South America, and they're saying, I sit as queen. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Keep going. Where did this caravan come from? If all these countries are living deliciously, and they've got all these delicacies, and they're doing all this, all this trading, and they're making all this money, why do we have all these people coming from Honduras and all these uh, um, foreign countries, Guyana stuff, marching all the way up thousands of miles just to get to the United States of America? You know, but they're they're living lavishly. You know, they sit as queens traveling up to go sit as a queen up north <laughs> on caravans. Let's, see, let's keep going. Therefore, she, uh, uh, her plague shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and shall utterly be burned with fire. There's famine in these countries in South America right now, Central America, places in Belize. So let's keep going. She shall be utterly burned with fire, uh, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament uh, for her. Oh, Honduras, if Honduras economy collapsed, you said the kings of the earth is going to lament for Honduras? Most people don't even know where Honduras is. But I guarantee you if the United States got destroyed in one day, or got destroyed by the Almighty, everyone's like, oh, the great United States, you thought they couldn't be defeated, they got nuclear weapons and aircraft carriers and drones and they got satellites in space and this and all this stuff. They're going to be bewail her, for they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off from fear and torment, saying, Alas, Alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour she judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man shall buy their merchandise anymore. So I don't know how Honduras and Chile and all these places are uh, doing damage by it all, buying all this merchandise and stuff. Uh, go ahead. Venezuela is already drowning. Most people probably don't even know the struggle and the torment and everything that's going on in Venezuela right now. And it's like nobody's complaining, nobody's lifting up their voice, nobody's crying about Venezuela. It's not in the news every day, you know. Nobody cares. So then, how does Venezuela fit into this category? And they're they're in deep trouble. Yeah, rights and everything. So I'm gonna go to Revelation 17. I'm gonna chapter back. Revelation 17, four, four and five. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness uh, of her fornications. Here we go. So she's she's arrayed in gold and purple. So this is North America. All you know, North America, South America, got to be super rich. All the nations in there, all the countries. Let's keep going. And upon her forehead, the name was written, Mystery of Babylon, the Great. The mother of harlots, the abomination of the earth. Now, if you look up the Statue of Liberty, that comes from a Roman false god deity, a goddess called Libertus, and they took that from 
they actually took that religion or took that false god from the Babylon in the Old Testament, and that Babylon was called the mother of harlots, literally. So the Statue of Liberty is literally the mother of harlots. And what they did to sacrifice in the priests, it, it referred to uh, women that wanted their freedom, so they sleep with the priests or whatnot, or they earn money through prostitution and gain their freedom. They prayed to the mother of harlots or this false deity, this goddess, and then they, through prostitution, they were able to get their freedom through the priests and whatnot. So this is why the Statue of Liberty or Libertus for the Roman end up coming into here. The Statue of Liberty is the mother of harlots to the T. That's the name of that false deity, a Babylonian false goddess. So that statue, there is many statues in other places on earth, but they don't fit the other things it's talking about Babylon. So that statue is only in the United States, besides the besides the small ones. I was going to say, there's another one somewhere. It's a smaller one, yeah. I can't remember where it is. I'm saying Paris. Yeah, so, but we kind of already see that. Um, so I don't see how you're getting, there's no Statue of Liberty in Honduras and all this Chile and all this stuff. I don't know where they get North and South America. It's all Babylon because it's called America or something. So let's keep going. Uh, we're going to go with uh, the preparation. Uh, let's go with uh, Revelations 8. Hopefully this is beneficial. When you're finding a congregation, make sure it's a congregation that keeps the two great commandments. Love the Almighty with all the heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all the strength. And second is like unto it, love thy neighbors on thyself. Upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It says, you shall know my disciples for the love that they have for one another. And also, if you, it says, if the blind live the blind, most don't fall in the ditch. If those congregations don't happen to know, one, if they don't even know who the true Hebrews are, that's a good indication. But two, if they don't know about persecution, if they don't have a contingency plan, for the members of the people, even the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons, the Mormons are the Latter-day Saints, they be canning their own stuff, they got their mylars, they're doing classes. If stuff popped off in the States, the Mormons probably be like the survivors and whatnot. But, Everybody turns to Latter-day Saints yes, trying to get some food. Yeah, so they, they've been doing it for years, years. So it says sometimes even the Messiah said, Yeshua, uh, uh, Hamashiach said, sometimes the children of uh, the darkness is wiser than the children of light. Because they're doing things we ought to be doing. I remember there was a power outage for like 16 hours or like two days in San Diego. And I looked outside and all these people had their generators and kept their refrigerators going, kept lights on. And we were in dark and I had to get all the food out of my freezer because the lights were coming on for like two days. I think it was like, what, 18 hours or something? So I had to barbecue all the meat in my fridge, freezer just so it didn't go to waste. And then I looked at all these sinners and I was like, how is it? That if I follow spiritual things and things of the spirit came before things of the natural, how is it that these people are more wiser than me and things of the natural? I should be ahead of them because we know that the things were seen were made by things that are not seen. He spoke the word. His spirit went into us. He uh, breathed the spirit into us. The things of the spirit preceded the things of the natural. He just spoke the word. So if we're children of the spirit and being led by the spirit, how is it that these wicked people were ahead of me in things in the natural. And from then on, I said, no, it's not going to be that way anymore. No more will I be unprepared for my family or the brothers and sisters in the Most High. So, Revelations 8. We're going to start at verse 6. It says, And the seven angels which had seven trumpets prepared them to sound. And the first angel sounded and followed um, uh, hell and fire and mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the tree were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. So we see that the Almighty is going to blow the trumpet, and a lot of the grass and trees are going to be burned up. There's going to be a shortage of food. This is what the Almighty, not what you know the wicked one's going to do, and the theme of concentration camps and all this stuff. Just what the Almighty is going to do upon the earth. Kind of like the days of Noah, Sal, the son of man. He did it four days and 40 nights with just water, which is just the same plague. But he's going to do it with different plagues, different trumpets, and different seals. So, if I know that a third part of all the greens are going to get burned up, and we know there's a shortage of food, and I want to prepare the brothers and sisters in the Most High, what do you think I should be doing with my extra money? I could get this $80 phone, which gives me talks, texts, and internet, and Google, and YouTube, and everything I need. Or I could spend $900 on a phone. 
I could get a basic car to where I don't have four or five hundred dollar car payments plus a full coverage insurance, or I can humble myself and get a regular car and use that extra money to make preparations for my family. I don't have to get the newest Jordans out. I could get some regular shoes that big five sporting goods, quality shoes that will last long. If you gotta make better decisions. You know, so and, and especially if you're trying to find a congregation, you need to find a, a man or the man, the ministers there that A can see afar off that is led by the Spirit, and to see afar off, that watch and pray, that these days won't catch them on the word, that the whole congregation can escape these days that's going to come upon the whole earth. So let's keep going. So the second angel sounded, and it was a great um, mountain burning with fire and cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. So we already know the travel's going to come. And what if this seal, because we're going to be for this seal, and I'm teaching on this later. So I would say for the people in the States to come anything Central or South America, I personally say come to Belize because they speak English. But besides that, I would say come down south because if this seal goes off, it says no man knows the time of the day. You ain't flying out to no uh, Ghana or wherever you think Jerusalem. If you if, with the plane tickets and if stuff pops off, you think you're gonna be able to fly out? You better be there years ahead of time, set up shop, everything. So. We don't know when this stuff pops off. You should be headed to a place that you can drive across. You can drive, you can jump a fence, you can make it across, you can go through a jungle, you can make it to wherever you need to get to. You should be already, go ahead and take care of her. Make it tense. If you need to get some uh, fruit snacks, give them a couple fruit snacks. Make it where you need to go to. So, verse eight, uh, I think we came to verse eight. So verse nine, the third part of the creatures which were in the sea that had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed um, so, uh, some people say, oh, these, some of these trumpets have already been sounded because of the dolphins and this and this. And this is over a length of time, and it could be because of pollution. I believe when the Almighty sounds the trumpet, the whole earth is going to say, this has never been recorded in the whole planet to where all this, the, a third part of all the animals just died. Not just, oh, we've seen some dolphins over here, and we see a couple of whales over there, and we see a couple of this over there. Yeah, I believe stuff is going down. It says, like a woman in travail, the magnitude is going to be greater, and uh, the frequency is going to be greater, like a woman in, uh, in labor, her contraction and whatnot. So we see that this stuff is propelling record tornadoes, record earthquakes, record floods, record heat waves. We see that this day is coming. It's coming close, coming close, coming close. So let's keep going. Verse uh, 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 10, the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, and as it was burning with their lap, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and the, uh, and the fountains of water, and the name of the star was called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many died of the waters because they were made bitter. So, if we know that there's going to be a shortage of drinkable water, what pre preparations are you? Because it says, watch and pray that these days don't catch you unaware. So that means he wants you to prepare. It's not like, you know, there's going to be a shortage of water, but you know what? I, I don't need to store any water. Then what's the point of watching and praying that these days don't catch you unaware? If the Almighty's just going to let a glass of water just come down every day and the Almighty's going to provide. What is the purpose of watching and praying that you can escape these days? What are you going to escape? If he's just going to provide, you can just stay where you're at, do nothing, have no faith with works, no, no nothing. He's doing this as a warning so you can make preparations. Wicked people, I mean, sinners call themselves preppers, but you should be making preparation for your congregation. And if you don't have a congregation, you should be looking for a congregation. You need to repent from your sins, get baptized by a minister of the Most High, and be looking where the Almighty wants to plant yourself. So the, the minister that baptized you is probably where you need to be planted. Ten times out of ten. Unless you got baptized at a false church like I did, and I had to go to a true matter of the, of, of the scriptures. So, um, stopping right there. Is there anything you want to say on that? Uh, no, I think you hit it right on the nail. So, I don't really have much to add to it. Um, you said that the Almighty doesn't want to take you unaware. Yeah. I don't really, because there's been a couple of red moons and stuff, so I really don't pay too much thought to it, because um, I don't, There, we are supposed to look at the signs, but also we don't want to get too deep into astrology, because he also said the observer of time, so we do know 
we look at the size, it says that some of the signs is the moon will not give us light and the sun will be darkened. And so we know that's a sign. As far as the blood moon and everything, we've had so many come to pass that um, and nothing happened. So not saying that it doesn't have any importance. It could just be a clock, the Almighty's clock, just like we have a clock for the moon and a clock for the sun. It could just be a clock, a winding down clock to when it's going to come and pass judgment. So I don't want to come up with some uh, excuse or some random reason of, of what's my thoughts or what's my meaning on that. The Almighty just going to have to give me revelation. As a minister, I don't claim to know everything. I know enough to get people to repent, be baptized, and get saved. But um, no, it's as great as the mystery. You know, every year the Almighty, by the scriptures, uh, by the Spirit, is leading me to more truth. It says, I'll lead you and guide you to all truth. You know, it says that the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadish, will teach you all things. So back to the main thing with the blood moon and whatnot. Uh, there's been so many in my lifetime that and nothing happened that I just take it as it's a clock, a winding down clock, because it has some significance. The Almighty doesn't just do stuff to, to do stuff, but from my study of the scriptures, hey, if other people have some thoughts or have some scriptures on it, and want to uh, shoot me a direction or whatnot, then hey, I'm more open to that, you know, as long as it's not no spookology and coming out of the book, book of Enoch or book of Jason or book of this or book of that. I just stick to the scriptures and the apocrypha. So, um, Go from there. Hopefully that didn't really answer his question. That was a long winded. I don't know. <laughs> he said, understood. He said, um, people preach that preparing that being preppers or preparing shows lack of faith. Can you give me an extension in a church? Okay. So so you mean to tell me these people that say that, like Joseph, when he got the dream, that hey, I seen a little uh, ox, real skinny, ate a big fat ox. And that dream meant a famine. And so what did he tell the king of Egypt to do, Pharaoh to do? He said, save up a fifth part, that when the famine comes, you'll be good. So he believed that, they called it the spirit of the gods is in him on interpretation. But he believed the word of the Most High, that dream was from the Most High. And that Pharaoh took heed to that. And because he took heed to that, he was able to save thousands of people. This is why he says the Almighty revealed this so I can save many lives. Same thing with any person. That's like saying a farmer, when it's springtime and it's summer and it's fall, I don't need to save any crops for the three months of winter where it's going to be 30 degrees, 21 degrees, negative 20 degrees. I don't need to save any food. That would be a lack of faith. You know, I just eat it all and the Almighty would provide me some snow cakes for me to eat. I mean, <laughs> yellow that, ones. <laughs> that makes no sense. Why? If these people need to, don't even have life insurance. Don't, the Almighty will provide for your kids. Don't have car insurance besides getting impounded by the car. You never know. You know, that's lack of faith. Preparing. Why, why would they say watch and pray that these days don't catch you unaware? This is why he said that. So you can make preparations. Because if I just need to, I don't need to watch and pray if he's going to take care of me, right? Nah. The apostles, even though the Almighty told them, they suffered many things. They suffered many things saving people. They hit persecution. And they had faith. They were moving mountains. They were kicking, raising people from the dead. And they had to prepare. They had to make preparations. Okay, we're just going to have congregation. We can't go into the synagogue anymore. We'll have it house to house. And we're just going to make circuits and do this and do that. They didn't do that little fish sign that people say, no, they didn't. that's that little Christian stuff, little idolatry stuff. No, did, are you a believer? I'm a believer. Let's make a fish sign. No, none of that foolishness. But um, they even had to adjust the way they preached the gospel based upon the persecution they were having. So if... If, if it's a lack of faith, then why do we have the book of Revelation to tell us what's going to happen? We have that so the saints could watch and pray. As a matter of fact, let's, let's look at Revelation 16. Go ahead. So everybody in the Bible has faced persecution. There's not really any dispensation where, except for maybe Adam, you know, innocence, where they didn't have persecution. So then it's like we come to now and it's like, so we don't fit the category of having to be persecuted. And then a lot of people will be like, oh, well, we're persecuted because I can't keep the Sabbath. Like, nobody tells you you have to have that. You're not a slave. You're free to go get whatever job you want. You're free to move to other states. You're free to move, especially being American. You're free to move to many, many countries. You know, you don't have to get visas and stuff like that. All you do is just take your American passport and just travel willingly. So you can't say that, you know, 
where we're at in America right now is persecution. That's not persecution. So why do we think that we're separated and set apart that we don't have to face any persecution that like everybody else, all of our forefathers have had to face? Yeah, all of them. And it talks to me in Hebrews chapter 11 about they were sawed asunder. They dwelt in caves. They were in prison. They were stoned. But, you know, so how is it? It says it's impossible that offenses must come. So the, the, there's no way around that. Persecution will come. Let's go to Revelation right here. I think it's seven. Uh, Revelation chapter six, which is cool. And we'll go back to Revelation chapter sixteen in a little bit. Revelation chapter six, and it said right here, and it says, "And they, uh, and when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain." For the word of the Most High and for the testimony that they held. Check this out. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doth thou not judge and avenge the blood of them that dwell upon earth? These are the ones that faced persecution and died. And he says, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So this lets us know when these trumpets and go off, they say, oh, there's a rapture and we're not going to escape. No, we'll escape the last trumpet, the seventh one. But these six trumpets with all this shortage of food and water and all this stuff, we're going to be here for this. And it says the wicked one in Revelation and Daniel is going to make war against the saints and prevail against them. A lot of saints will be killed. And this is my theory a good portion of the saints that will be killed is the ones that didn't prepare. The ones that didn't prepare, a good portion of the saints that will go ahead and take the mark of the beast and, and fall from grace will because they didn't prepare with water, they didn't prepare with food, persecution happened, mark of the beast came on the scene, they didn't want to see their kids starve to death, so they went ahead and said, well, the Almighty will forgive me, and they take the mark of the beast so to feed their kids, and now they're going to lake of fire. Go ahead. Sisters, I gotta speak on that because some of these men that I I'm not even gonna call them brothers, uh, and I don't necessarily call them men that I speak to on Facebook, you know, we get on the subject of having, you know, something stored up or whatever, getting out of Babylon and they'll be like, Oh, well I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stand strong and if they come then I'm just gonna suffer and I'm just gonna do this. I'm just like, people talk. People talk, there's people who say, oh, I'm going to go to hell. I'm not scared of hell. Yeah, you're big and bad till it comes, you know. And it's like, and I'll ask them, I'm like, but what if you, and a, a lot of times it's men that don't have wives. So that's what I'm saying, sisters, watch out. When you're getting with these people, make sure they have a mindset to truly lead you, not just, uh, not just into the bedroom, but they need to be leading you financially. They need to be leading you spiritually. And part of being led spiritually is having faith and believing all the things that are written in this Bible. So anyways, what I was saying is that, you know, they'll be like, I'll be like, what if you have a wife and kids? You're just going to watch your kids. Oh, this is, uh, it's like, how do you, how do you sit here in, in your present state of comfortability? Because nobody that I know just wants to live homeless or just living on streets, living uncomfortable. So you're living comfortably right now. And then you're going to talk and say that you're not going to prepare because you're just so big and bad that you're just not afraid of anything that's going to come your way. That you would willingly put your wife, your future wife, or your wife and children in harm's way. To me, that's just dumb. So sisters, watch out for these brothers. Make sure that you don't just cover, you know, do you have an STD? Have you been married before? You know, make sure you guys cover everything. So that when you pick a head, that you're picking a righteous head that's not going to put you in a situation to where you're going to have to take the mark of the beast. Because there's a lot of sisters out there that let their husbands lead them into sin. Oh, I got to do everything my husband says. And he'll be like, even if, it's, even if he tells you to sin, even if he tells you to kill somebody, you won't kill him. Well, I got to listen to my husband. Stay away from the woman. Stay away from the woman. Sisters, watch out for these men. Yep, that's right. You got to say she just got here. <laughs> yeah. I'm just I've been hearing a lot. The fact that if it's good at first, because my brother had um, already a wife and he put a knife, I mean, she put a knife out just because for the fact, like, I forgot really kind of the whole situation that happened. 
she don't really cook and I feel like they go out a lot and then she just tired of him. I feel like, I mean, like dealing with him, like telling her what to do and she, I feel like she wants to tell him what to do. So I feel like I had that experience, like what her brother told me about it. And then after that, like, they, he had let her go. Out for this dude. I mean, uh, uh, what it is is, I mean, we're getting off subject, but um, good, you could be a decent husband, but a bad leader. I mean, uh, the leadership should be a part of being a husband to lead your home, but they could be a good companion, but a bad leader, I meaning they could treat you right, but they don't have the leader capability capabilities and then your congregation should be head, have the whole congregation in a direction anyway so your husband is a leader in his own right but then if he's at a congregation they should all be working on one goal because then they can't be stopped just like the Tower of Babel it says hey these are people are all one mind one accord nothing they imagine will be stopped and so we uh, scattered their language so if a congregation has one mind there's nothing can stop us you know so uh, back to what she was saying, Jeremiah 12, 5. I'm going to just read it real quick. It says, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how can thou contend with the horses? He's saying, if you can't run with the footmen, and you're getting tired with the footmen, how are you going to keep up with horses? And that's how people live their life in the Most High, because you can't even obey. Half of these people that talk all this stuff can't even obey the commandments. Oh, well, I got to. And it's weird how every person that works at a bank keeps the Sabbath for some reason. Every person that works at a bank is off before sunset on a Friday and they, they're closed on. It's weird how there's center jobs out there that they just unknowingly, unwillingly just keep the Sabbath in. You can't find a job. So, but besides that, um, go ahead and find out again. Get some more fruit snacks if you have to. So, give them some pretzels. There's pretzels. no more. There's no more. <laughs> Give them something. So, so then, um, <laughs> that's what we gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. Is we're being persecuted by the kids right now. <laughs> so, um, if you can't even, if these people can't even obey, like I said, you know, they love me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They can say, "Oh, I'll do this," and you can't even obey now. And we're not even under any remotely persecution. The persecution is forced vaccinations, trying to force vaccinations, trying to make the checkpoints. If it gets a certain grade, they have to get vaccinations, trying to put, you could choose what gender, trying to push gay agendas and all this stuff in school. So we're under real light persecution, enough to still leave the country, but real light persecution. So if you can't even obey now, how are you going to stand when, when the trouble comes? Because if you're saying you will, then you have to say Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5 is wrong. If thou has run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, how can thou contend with horses? And if the land... And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trusteth, they weary thee, how will thou do in the swelling of the Jordan when the flood comes? If you're in a peaceful time right now and we're not under any kind of significant persecution and you still can't obey, it's wearing you out and you can't obey, how are you going to do it with the swelling of the Jordan? These people ain't going to be able to stand. So, I mean, just be weary of these Facebook people, you know, um, Facebook, YouTube, you know, they come off real hard, but... Bottom line is, how many people are they trying to save? It's easy to post something on Facebook, but it takes a lot when you outreach to people, knock on doors, hit people up, feed the homeless, get people, propel them, have a barbecue, do Bible studies with them, call them, check up on them, visit them when they're sick. It, it, it's easy to just post something on Facebook and say what you will and will do, but to actually save a soul and get someone who loves to smoke weed or loves to listen to rap or loves to do this and dress this way and get them to want to live holy and live clean and separate unto the most highly and live righteous and live just, yeah, that's, it, you can't do that just typing stuff on Facebook. That takes time and energy and you have to love them more than they love themselves. You have to love a soul more than they love themselves. So. You know, get rid of that all that foolishness. But now let's go to Revelation 16. And this will be the last one. And then, you know, if there's anything you guys want to hit, Revelation 16. I'm going to go with verse uh, 15. I think all my uh, Revelation 16, verse 15. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, meaning live holy, live clean. 
lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So right here, he's directly dealing with sin. But this is also in the book of Revelation of what's going to come to pass on the people. So I showed you in Luke 21, and I showed you in Revelation 16 that we watch and pray. One says that you can escape, you be counted worthy to escape. So when he says, if you read in Luke and whatnot, it says, he that's on the rooftop, don't come down. And you decide to come down from the rooftop and you get is sent into captivity or you get killed. The Almighty hey, will provide. He, he that's in the field, don't come back to the city. So he's giving you a warning. Oh, I don't need, I, I, if I, that's a lack of faith. If I just stay in the field, I'm going to go back to the city and watch you get destroyed. It says there should be two grinding and one should be took, another one left. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you brought that, you know. I do see something wrong with some bumping and grinding. All right, so anyways, so he's giving you warnings. Hey, pray that your fight's not on the Sabbath. Pray that your fight's not in the, uh, in the winter. Why is he saying that? That the Almighty may give you favor, and when persecution comes, you can escape, and it's not winter time. It's not negative 10 degrees. It's not the Sabbath where they trap Jerusalem, they shut the gates, and you're trapped in by the Roman army, and it got crushed, you got destroyed. So these are what he's saying to make preparations for yourself. So that whole little lack of faith thing, that is a cop-out excuse for not taking action. And it says faith without works is dead being alone. If you really believe the book of Revelation, and if you don't understand what Babylon is, watch the part series. I think it's a three, four part series. I go into detail on scriptures on why it's taking Babylon. No, it's not no spiritual Babylon where you spiritually come out. No, it's not come out the major cities and whatnot. But I, I go in depth and I exhaust all scriptures going into Babylon. But, and if you don't understand, then hey, I can't knock it. You're still going to get destroyed if you stay in the country. But my, my thing is, if you believe these scriptures, then you have to put faith to works. You know? The Anything you, you want to say? The day you hear my voice hard and not your heart. That's right. What you guys say? Increase your faith. Um, develop your mind strongly. Don't let, no, don't let nothing down you. you know. Yeah, that's right. I kind of agree. I wanted to hit on what she said. Some of it, why people don't want to come out, is that they don't believe in themselves. Like the, uh, I have a friend, and um, you know she does uh, project managing, and she tries to teach these skills and these trades in this industry to other he Hebrews, not Hebrews necessarily by Hebrew by bloodline. So, but she says the number one problem that she finds when she runs into people that she's trying to teach is lack of uh, faith within themselves, lack of belief in themselves, and so I just feel like you know we really need to build ourselves up within the Almighty, you know, and, and internally as well, that we know that we can do this. If we did this, you can do it. You know, we're not some special, uh, you have an inheritance, and this is my dad died, and my stepmother got over a million dollars, and me and my children got not one penny from that. You know, so we didn't have an inheritance. It was just good leadership, great leadership, proper planning, preparation, and just watching and praying. We, it, we didn't show up in Belize. It, you know, people look at the end result, and they're like, oh, well, you, you did it, you're there, and this and that. It, it didn't start like that. It started from one can. It started from one gallon of water. It started from sitting, like he said, in a house in a power outage for 16 hours, and everybody had lights. This, the, um, this uh, monk guy, this Cam Cambodian guy, um, didn't even speak English, came over and brought us one of those like tall Jesus candles because all we had is this little itty bitty Ikea tea lights. That's, that's all we had and a little bit of charcoal to grill. So it started from that and it just grew to now where we're in Belize. So don't say that you can't do it. It's little little things here and there. Set aside, stop going out to eat so much. You don't gotta go out and eat every day. Suffer, these Asians suffer, these Hispanics suffer, all these different cultures suffer in the beginning so that they can get to something later down the road we have to do the same thing we can't think that things are just going to fall on our lap like if you don't put forth works to your faith you're not going to go anywhere just like anything that you've ever wanted in life you have to work for making it out the country out out of babylon not even necessarily to belize wherever you decide to go making it out of babylon is not something you're just going to jump in it takes research it takes time dedication it takes energy it takes focus it takes finances you know, so don't feel like you can't do it. 
like I said, start with every time you go grocery shop shopping, set aside a can. Don't buy those sodas every time you go fill for gas. Instead of buying a, uh, uh, some soda, buy some flour, buy some rice, buy something that's going to help your family in the future. So uh, I just want to encourage you guys that you not only believe in the scriptures, but that you believe in yourself. That's right. Um, and that you guys make the steps. If you need help, we're here for you, Sister Brittany. Me, I make um, Mylar videos showing people how to, uh, excuse me, Mylar their stuff. You know, I don't know everything. I don't know a ton of things, to be quite honest. But you know, what I do know, the information I do have, I willingly share with you guys, except for where I live. Because y'all not going to show up at my doorstep. I'm letting you know that right now. Don't show up at my doorstep. You won't be happy. People will ban you. Hit us up. But if you have questions, 619-501-1375. Or look us up on the uh, Facebook and the YouTube. Uh, check out the YouTube, the archives. There is the Babylon uh, series. Definitely check that out. If you have any questions, we can go from there. And then, uh, yeah, anything you want to say? She said it. You said it, you good? With all that said, being done, what we do? Don't drop standards. And what else we do? Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. All right, Shalom. Sorry. Get almighty hand clap. You got to look up there. And just standing. Yeah, it's not about what?